This video is brought to you by Manscaped.com. This is for shaving this. That's not the talking points. Keep yourself well groomed with the performance package kit from Manscaped. More on that in just a bit. Cruise ship holidays are a bit like Mama. You either love them or you hate them. In my view, they're just something for super old people. Although I do like the idea of kind of just, I don't know, I'm super busy. It's like, can't I just stare at the ocean and get drunk for like a week? But you know, too many old people. Days on end aboard a floating mini city that is often a Butlin's holiday crossed with Disneyland is either going to be a personal version of hell or the ideal way to spend your precious holiday time. No judgment here from my end, but I am gonna tell you about the largest cruise ship to ever set sail, the Symphony of the Seas. When I asked for this, uh, the script for this to be written, I said, please don't make this like a holiday brochure. <laughs> Cause I see these videos about like giant cruise ships and all I'm like, is, is this an advert for the company? We're not being paid by whoever makes this cruise ship. Just to be clear, we're being paid by Manscaped. Now, just over two years old, the Sympathy of the Seas is an astronomical achievement in many ways. Five times the size of the Titanic and packed with enough activities to keep even the most manically hyperactive child occupied for weeks on end. It is a true floating wonderland. But the ship is very much more than just a karaoke bar on steroids. Beautifully designed. This is an advert! Beautifully designed with well sought out open spaces complete with over 20,000 plants. That's insane. <laughs> The Symphony of the Seas is as close to a real-life floating city as we have ever come. The 2020 cruise ship season was utterly decimated because of COVID-19, with countless stories of cruise ships placed in quarantine as the disease tore unchecked through their decks. While the Symphony of the Seas, which is owned by Royal Caribbean International, was far from the worst affected, it wasn't spared with one employee dying from the illness. But as the new year develops and bookings begin to swell, the largest cruise ship the world has ever seen will soon be sailing the high seas once again. You know, I've never been on a cruise, honestly, like, I don't really have any intention of going on a cruise, but it, I, I don't want to get COVID on a cruise ship. It sounds rough. Allegedly, please don't sue me, cruise industry. It's just my opinion. <laughs> We don't often talk about cruise ships on mega projects, so we thought we'd quickly delve into their history before we tell you all about the Symphony of the Seas. It's a grand name. In many ways, you might think that cruise holidays would be the epitome of modern travel and 21st century holidays, but they're nearly 200 years old. One of the first examples, we know the Titanic was, I guess that was more for transport though, wasn't it? One of the first examples of what we could term a cruise holiday, although it was limited to the European aristocracy, was the Francesco I, a small ship that trawled the Mediterranean starting 1833. P&O, the world's oldest cruise lines started their cruise holidays in 1844, again around the Mediterranean, and was accompanied by a large-scale advertising campaign. The only thing I know about P&O, if it's the same company, is they have these kind of grotty ships that take you from Dover to Calais, so like UK to France, so do it as a kid when I went on holiday. They're kind of sh**. Allegedly. The first purpose-built luxury cruise liner was the Princess in Victoria Luz, a German vessel completed in 1900. Obviously, I don't know how to pronounce that. While there were plenty of people using ships back in those days, the vast majority did so purely for transportation purposes. The transatlantic routes, which took at least a week, no doubt provided a memorable experience, but for most, it was secondary to the need to get from A to B. The exception being the filthy rich who could afford to pop over to New York for a month or two before returning to Europe. For most of the population, the idea of cruising the open seas simply for the hell of it was still a long way off. The 20th century was a strange period for ocean travel, the largest, most majestic ships ever to grace the waters appeared. Some sank, others were pressed into action during the World Wars, and a small few managed to stumble through to the other side. The man that lasted between 1914 and 1945 set the general public back even further from the notion of pleasure cruises, but by the 1960s, things were beginning to change, probably to do with a lack of U-boats just sinking giant ships all the time. We now had aeroplanes that could travel across the Atlantic in a matter of hours, and the numbers on the transatlantic routes plummeted. The Queen Elizabeth II, an ocean liner built in 1965, was one of the first to be used in a dual role, continuing its regular Atlantic crossing routes during the warmer months and venturing towards warmer climates to act as a cruise ship when the northern hemisphere turned cold. It was soon joined by the SS Norway, formerly the SS France, which again served two roles, but is generally considered as Royal Caribbean's first supership. Things began to change quite dramatically as we moved into the new millennium. Enormous cruise ships capable of accommodating thousands of customers were now scouring the planet, and things had changed on board as well. Ships now came with casinos, multiple restaurants, karaoke bars, libraries, theaters, spas, hot tub cinemas, swimming pools, miniature golf courses. What is going on? 
Bowling alleys, tennis courts, childcare facilities, and strangely, but perhaps not entirely surprisingly, even morgues. Yeah, I mean, you got, look, it's there for old people. There's gonna be lots of people dying on these trips. It's like, oh, what happened to Mr. Jones? Oh, he ate too much and he died. I mean, it's gonna happen. Ha 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 ha, death. These were now astonishingly large floating ecosystems. Do they have prisons on cruise ships? It's just, mate, if they have a morgue, what if someone commits crimes? <laughs> they must have a jail, a brig or something. These were now astonishingly large floating ecosystems, and in 2019, roughly 30 million people took a cruise holiday of some kind or another, creating around $150 billion in revenue. This is a big business, so big, in fact, that another 15 large-scale cruise ships appeared in 2020 alone. <laughs> bad timing. And word is it there will be a further 28 in 2021. I'd also say bad timing there as well. And that brings us nicely back to the biggest, the baddest cruise ship of them all, the Symphony of the Seas. The largest cruise ship in the world by gross tonnage was built at the Chantier de Atlantique shipyard in Saint-Nazaire, France, and is the fourth in Royal Caribbean's Oasis class of cruise ships. She was ordered in 2014 and completed in 2018 at a cost of $1.35 billion. Good lord. She comes with a gross tonnage of 228,081 tons and in case you were wondering no oh, it's not quite the biggest ship in the world at the moment that award goes to the fso asia and fso africa two super tankers that form the ti class of ships with a gross tonnage of 236,638 tons so a little more than the largest cruise ship but a lot less fun but the symphony of the seas is enormous with a length of 361 meters it is only 20 meters shorter than the empire state building what the, what is going on who decides to build this it's beamed to the waterline is 47 meters and has a full height of 72.5 meters it's spread across 18 decks it's even 30 meters longer than the largest aircraft carrier in the world the uss gerald ford the ship has a maximum passenger capacity of 6680 and comes with a crew of 2200. it's incredible that there's like one member of crew for every three passengers that's sort of mind-blowing there are 2,759 staterooms to accommodate the wide variety of budgets on offer. The very top end of this is the ultimate family suite, which boasts a multi-story in-suite slide, a private cinema, a floor-to-ceiling Lego wall, a full-size whirlpool with an ocean view, a vertical maze for kids. What on earth is that? Your own butler and a choice of either the Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, or PS4 Pro. Honestly, guys, you got to get those next-gen consoles for how much you're probably charging or just provide them all. It's probably like, not maybe not 100. Well, I get maybe we'll find out how much it is. If that sounds enticing, there is a link, but there's not really. This isn't sponsored by Royal Caribbean somehow. Royal Caribbean, look, if you want to hook your boy up, you know what to do. Drop me an email, yo. If that sounds exciting, then better start saving because one week in the Ultimate Family Suite will set you back at least $45,000. I want three games consoles for that bloody price, Royal Caribbean. And on the most popular is you can pay almost twice that. But on the plus side, there is a little red carpet outside the door, which no doubt adds a degree of prestige to your say. Or just like just go to B&Q and just buy a little piece and slap that down outside your economy cabin with no windows. The Symphony of the Seas began its maiden voyage on the 7th of April 2018 and continued to tour the Mediterranean through the summer season before moving to Florida where it began winter cruises throughout the Caribbean. Now we're going to give you some insight into what a ride on the Symphony of the Seas is like in just a moment, but first, oh ho ho, a word from today's video is sponsor Manscaped. Manscaped, if you aren't familiar, is a company aimed specifically at your nether... <laughs> It's a company aimed specifically at men who understand the value of being well-groomed in the 21st century, which should be all men. You don't want a forest down there, chaps. Think of them as a hardware store, but for your body. Manscaped, and you don't have to go to it. Don't worry, there's no going to the hardware store where there's COVID everywhere. You just order online. <laughs> what? Manscaped has this great performance package kit that they've sent me. I've got it right here. It's just slightly massive. By the way, this gold text they have here looks super. I'm not sure if you can see that reflecting. But it looks very nice. It's got a very premium feel to it for, you know, something that shaves your nether regions. <laughs> They've sent me a lot of tools and products. Obviously, this is this is called the what's this called the lawnmower 3.0 i'm not sure what the one and the two were like but with three they've really got it nailed down there's a little light on there it's got something called skin safe technology which i don't know what that is but if it keeps my skin safe where this thing is designed to shave that is a good thing gentlemen also whoops a daisy Let's not throw this around. Also, there's this. 
Uh, this is not a new device to me. I've had one of these before. This goes up your nose and in your ears. I don't have ear hair yet. I'm not old enough, but my nose hair gets out of control. I've had cheapo ones of these from the, the drugstore that, you know, you drop it and then it just stops working. You're like, well, that was a waste of four pounds. <laughs> but this, you know, it's got a premium feel to it. It really does. It's got this like nice matte black soft thing on the outside, trims your nose hair, keep, you know, that's not a good look. You don't want that look. What else is in here? This, uh, by the way, they sent me like four of these, so that's why this one's never been used. Don't worry, I haven't been shaving my, uh, with this one. They sent me many. This is the Crop Preserver. Ball deodorant does what it says on the tin right there. I mean, on the plastic bottle, but you know, you know what I mean. Guys, this is Manscaped. Also, if you get it today, you get a shed travel bag, which I can't show you because they sent me four of these packs. <laughs> I don't know why, but they didn't send me the travel bag. But I looked it up and it looks really cool. They did send me the boxer briefs. Again, <laughs> I have an unwrapped pair. Again, I have an unwrapped pair right here because this isn't OnlyFans, all right? That's an OnlyFans dot. I don't have an OnlyFans, obviously not. These are too large for me, but I think they sent me multiple sizes. <laughs> but you get these as well. Start looking good from head to toe. No pair of stones left unturned. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Manscaped.com, 20% off, plus free international shipping and those two gifts. That's when you use the promo code MEGAPROJECTS. Again, manscaped.com, promo code MEGAPROJECTS. There's also a link below. And let's get back to selling a cruise. As I said earlier in the video, this ship is much more than just a vast floating tower block. The Symphony of the Seas was designed by Harry Kulabara, a Finnish naval architect best known for designing two groundbreaking ferries for the Silja Line, both featuring a 150-meter two-deck promenade through the center of the ship with a huge bay window at the end. But while Kulabara oversaw the bulk of the work, as many as 100 other architects took part in the planning of the ship, a way to diversify the ship's aesthetics. Also, if this Kulabara dude was doing the whole thing, did he have like 18 decks? He's gonna be there forever. He's gonna die before the ship's finished. The ship is actually remarkably beautiful in places. Link but <laughs> You should be paying me, Symphony, or Royal Carib. Perhaps most notable with the reflective art of the Paradox Void metallic installation constructed with 1,200 steel triangles, the amphitheater style aqua theater with a beautiful ocean backdrop. Speaking of art, Royal Caribbean has said that there are more individual pieces of art on the Symphony of the Seas than there are in the Louvre. Probably not as good though, 13,347 to be exact. It's unlikely that anybody's going to go around and count, so we'll have to take their word on that. One of the major concerns for those thinking about a cruise holiday seems to be the fear of claustrophobia while out at sea. When you mention that there will be nearly 10,000 other people on board the ship, it could quickly sound like an unrestrained nightmare. Humans tend to like other humans, just not too many and not too close. With that in mind, the ship has been designed in a way that looks to spread its population out and prevent bottlenecks from appearing. The ship is divided into seven neighborhoods, each designed to provide a slightly different atmosphere. One for rich people, one for poor people. No, but I mean, look, if someone's paying like 45 grand, there's definitely gonna be some like... The pool and sports zone is exactly what it sounds like, and it comes complete with two 66-meter slides called the Ultimate Abyss. That sounds awesome. Which takes 13 seconds to go all the way through, and they are the tallest slides ever at sea. At 45.7 meters above sea level, they are taller than Buckingham Palace. When it all gets too much, there is also the adults-only solarium lounge, giving grown-ups some respite from the chaos, while the leafy Central Park neighborhood comes with 20,000 tropical plants and an alfresco wine bar. Like its namesake in New York, the park is situated situated in the center of the ship and is surrounded by cabins on all sides, just like New York. Just a quick point on plants before we continue, because who doesn't like a little bit of plant chat? Most are watered through an underground system to reduce the wet weight that traditional sprinklers would produce. Many of the trees needed to be loaded on by crane onto the ship, and the entire fauna world is overseen by a team of dedicated gardeners. They even used a special kind of soil, which is much more volcanic than your typical soil, making it less dense. Much of the action on the ship is centered around the boardwalk neighborhood, designed with the old-fashioned seaside resort style very much in mind. It's a place to get some candy floss, ride on a merry-go-round and imagine times of yesteryear, or alternatively a place to come and watch sports on any one of the 31 big screen TVs in the Playmakers Sports Bar and Arcade, link below! 
I can't, like, talk about this without it seem like I'm selling it. I don't know why. I apologize. There's also the Royal Promenade, boasting the world's first moving bar at sea, the Entertainment Palace. I can't all the bars at sea moving. Anyway, the Entertainment Place, where you can catch a performance of the Tony Award-winning Broadway musical Hairspray, the Youth Zone, which has its own adventure science lab and adventure ocean theater, and finally, the Vitality Spa and Fitness, which again, I think is fairly self-explanatory. If claustrophobia was the first fear of any potential passenger, boredom would probably be the second. With this in mind, Royal Caribbean decided to include just about everything on the Symphony of the Seas. I'm not exaggerating here. I've been to small cities that have less to do than this enormous floating activity center. Over 20 different restaurants catered to all tastes, from Mexican to sushi. Throughout a seven-day cruise, the ship's galleys produce roughly 4,399 kilograms of chicken, 2,267 kilograms of French fries, over 9,000 kilograms kilograms of baking potatoes and 952 kilograms of lobster tail. A massive 2.1 million liters of fresh water is consumed on board the Symphony of the Seas every single day, and when you get bored of water, there's always the 195 separate spirits that are carried on the ship. There are two theaters on board, one a 1,400-seat theater, and the other an outdoor aquatic theater with Olympic height platforms, one casino, a children's water park, a full-size basketball court, an ice skating rink, a zip line, and two 30-meter rock climbing walls. It's actually extraordinary. Think we're done? Not even close. There's laser tag, as escape room, sports bars, fairground rides, pool rooms, surf simulators, ping pong tables. In total, there are 24 pools, water slides, and flow riding waves. Altogether, they contain 94 times the water of one eruption of Old Faithful, the world's famous geyser at the Yellowstone National Park. And everyone's going to be like, Simon, what's a geyser? Is that a type of guy? Is that like a guy? So like, no, it's just how we say it in the UK. All right. While the lavish activities on offer might grab the headlines, it is the complex system out of sight that really keeps the ship going. And let's start with what literally keeps it going. The Symphony of the Seas has six engines in total, four 19,300 horsepower Wartzilla 12V46F engines, and two 25,700 horsepower Wartzilla 16V46F engines. They have the catchiest names ever. The propulsion itself comes from three 27,000 horsepower ABB Azipods, electric podded azimuth thrusters, and four 7,400 Wartzilla bow thrusters, mainly used for docking. Each one of these thrusters produces more power than seven Ferraris. This gives the ship its cruising speed of 22 knots or 25 miles per hour, which is a lot slower than a Ferrari, but also this ship is really big. The ship was constructed using 500,000 individual pieces, which is 27 more than was used to build the Eiffel Tower. The decks themselves are composed of 80 different pieces, each weighing as much as 800 tons. These were all constructed separately, then welded together to form the ship that we see today. The Symphony of the Seas comes with 18 lifeboats, each capable of holding 370 people. These were designed for one of Royal Caribbean's other Oasis-class cruise ships just a few years ago. Those are massive! They seat 370 people? Wow, they came a long way since the Titanic. To help prevent contamination, rubbish is thrown overboard. <laughs> Rubbish is frozen below deck in enormous containers until it can be removed when the ship is docked. The galleys are quite unlike any kitchen you've ever seen. Food processors are close in size to bathtubs, while dishwashers are about the same size as a small car. Food is stored in massive cold rooms, often the size of a bungalow, with distances between galleys and tables carefully calculated beforehand to minimize the amount of cold food coming up from the depths of the ship. Whatever your opinions on cruise holidays, it's possible to deny that the Symphony of the Seas is an extraordinary ship. Its gargantuan size alone is enough to give it its wow factor, but the ship is also surprisingly well designed and is much more than just a floating Benador. Getting a ship that size to float is an achievement in itself, but providing a workable and living environment for nearly 10,000 people on board is quite something else. Royal Caribbean claims that they have 94% positive feedback from their customers who have been on the Symphony of the Seas. Again, we'll have to go with them on that one. But if it's true, this mighty floating city is definitely doing something right. Not as right as Mega Project with our likes to dislike ratio, eh? Come on, Royal Caribbean, get it together. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you again to the legends over at Manscaped for sponsoring. And, uh, one quick other plug at the end here. There's a link below to Rob is not, but if you'd like to check out my other channel, Explored, spelled X-P-L-R-D, because I hate vowels, it's sort of like many little documentary profiles on newsworthy topics. Could we be covering cruise ship controversies in the near future? Maybe? 
Maybe not, but I'd like you to subscribe anyway if, if you feel like it. There's a link below, and thank you for watching.